Hi there, welcome to another edition of 411 Pop Culture. This is your host, Justin Steele. Today with me is my friend Gina, and we are going to be talking about the Charmed reboot, as well as reminiscing about the original series. So, Gina, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How good. are you? Good, good, good. We just finished watching this new episode. What did you think about it? I liked it more than I expected I would. Um, considering, you know, Gina is a really big fan of the original. Like, super fan. How many times have you, would you say you've watched the original? Probably each episode at least, like, 300 times. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. And, you know, she is not exaggerating. How many times <laughs> have we been like, hey, Gina, <laughs> you know, what new series have you been watching lately? And she's like, nah, I just rewatched Charmed. <laughs> Which is good. I mean, that bodes well for the original series you know I, I think there was a lot of great stuff in it and um, the new series did capture a lot of that like what are some of the similarities that you enjoyed that you thought they did well comparing to the two I definitely like the parallels between the original and the reboot there was a lot of things in the beginning of how they're setting it up where they mirrored those so it makes it easier of a transition to go to a reboot because it was definitely something that was going to be hard because the original Charmed is so well made. And beloved. Yes. So it was. there's a lot of skepticism that they wouldn't be able to do it well. Or that it wouldn't be as good as the original. The way that the sisters met was definitely parallel to the first one. Well, they, and I felt like they kind of combined sort of the, the Prue and Paige, uh, you know, sort of idea where... The new sister is sort of the oldest sister, but they did bring in that idea of the lost sister now joining the fold, the the trio, the the power of three. And um, yeah, I thought they did a really nice job bringing that in. So in so there was a lot that we liked about it, but was there anything you didn't really care for so far with the new the, this first pilot episode? I think that what captivated me about the original Charmed was that for the time that when they made it, the special effects weren't like overly done for what they could do in the time period. In the new one, I feel like they overly emphasized um, the new special effects. Yes, and so it kind of takes away from the original. Well, and I think like when we when we watch the original, there's definitely that nostalgic factor. And, yeah, I mean, of course, it looks nice. It makes more sense to have this sort of supernatural elements look real. And it does look nice. It, it looked really seamlessly done. But the charm of the original Charmed, especially for us now, are that the effects aren't that good. And that they weren't that great, even, at the, even for the time. They weren't necessarily state-of-the-art. So you're right. The sort of effects were kind of cheesy, and that helped. Because it was more about the performances from Alyssa Milano, Shannon Doherty, Holly Marie Combs, and Rose McGowan that, you know, I think we tuned in on. It wasn't necessarily for the effects. And here, they clearly relied on them. They look nice, and I thought they were done very well. But yeah, you know, it does take away. Anything else that, there, that you didn't really care for with the new reboot? I think they rushed it, a, like, a lot through the first episode where... In the original Charmed, it was kind of slow to get going. And in, in the first episode of the reboot, they went through them getting their powers, them meeting their sister, them killing demons. So they, it was a pretty big jump from the original where it took probably three episodes for them to get to that point. Of like accepting it. You know, and I also, I agree, and to further that point just a little bit, I also thought they kind of adjusted to having a new sister very quickly. Like it was kind of like, oh, this happened. We're not going to really question it. But yes, you are our new sister. I mean, there was no doubt that she was, but in terms of like, we they welcomed her into the fold awfully quickly. And... I don't know how much I believe that, you know, how well, especially because there wasn't any sort of like, I don't think they asked the question once, why did the mother leave her behind, leave the other sister behind? No, and in the first one they did, it, you know, they summoned their Patty and asked sure. her why they had given, why she had given Paige up. Yeah, and in this it was just kind of like, oh, it happened. Because you do sort of have the dynamic of Maggie and Mel are already sisters, you know, they've grown up together, and then Macy kind of comes in. 
and you know they all seem to get along right away i'm sure down the road there's going to be conflicts you know they mentioned that you know they're sisters blah 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 but i do feel like it rushed along already the acceptance of it sure not only did we just meet this girl slash this girl not just you know macy wow i just met maggie and mel but we're going to accept this destiny together now we're going to be forever together no matter what and uh, i do feel like they kind of rushed that along i think you make an excellent point they did mention that um, th before their mom died, she was summoning, giving their powers back. So I don't know if that kind of, and because when they accepted it, they were in imminent danger of getting killed. Sure. If that kind of made them accept it. And then the other stuff will play out as the season goes on. Yeah. With the questions that we have. I hope so. And, you know, it is a pilot episode, so, you know, who knows what's to come, really. But we'll say the one thing I had an issue with was when Mel was talking to Harry in the hallway. And at the time, she thought he was still just a uh, teacher. And she made a comment that something I have sort of an issue with in pop culture right now. Or, um, you know, I'm a big feminist. I am 100% on board for equal rights, human rights, women's rights. And I did not care for the line because I have noticed this coming up occasionally on social media is Mel said to Harry, you know, one of the reasons she has a problem with him is because he is a male teaching a women's studies class. And I think that I, I get the idea behind that, but I, I do think that, you know, the purest form of feminism is equality. So there really shouldn't be any reason a male couldn't teach a woman's studies class. You know, I think that's supposed to be the ultimate goal of feminism is to be able to have these sort of interchangeable roles that people find themselves in. And I feel like that does keep coming up in social media or sometimes I feel a little left out as the male. And this isn't me as a male whining. Of course, I know that I have a lot of more rights and a lot more freedoms. But as somebody who is, a, you know, who does support the idea of women's rights, women's studies, you know, to be thought that I couldn't, though, spread that message in an educational format would be kind of disappointing to me as a male, you know. Of course, we need, we're need we so far from having that equality for women, but, like, in general, I just... I don't like the idea, though, that there's a problem with men still taking a role because I feel like then the pendulum is being swung too far the other way. So I definitely agree. Thank you. You know, it's it's just, it's it's a tricky issue, and I definitely get the issues with it. But yeah, I, I, I think, you know, we can't, two, two wrongs don't make a right, sort of swinging that pendulum too far that way is going to be just as problematic as, you know, not having it. That being said, though, overall, though, I really did enjoy the feminist aspects of the show, the sort of women power. Uh, I really love the message they gave to the, the guy Cam, I think his name is, at the end, where they were like, you better pay attention and you better respect us. And I don't know, I thought that was really powerful. You know, talking about the original, though, I, like you said, that's one of your favorite all-time shows. I started watching that show, I think I watched the very first episode when it premiered. I was a big fan of Dawson's Creek and a big, big fan of Shannon Doherty, so I was definitely already watching the WB. Uh, so I was there from day one, but then I took a hiatus and I came back. I think the show was almost over and you started letting me borrow the DVDs and that's how I got back into it again. But when did you start watching it? Were you, was the show still on or did you come to it during the DVD at the end? I would see it on randomly when I would be home from school because they had it on in the morning from 9 to 10 every day on the WB so I would catch random episodes here or there and then my friend burned me the whole series nice. so this was nice. after all of them had aired and so I started watching them from the beginning to the end and then I didn't have cable so it was just Easier what to buy I, the DVDs and have it to watch. Yeah, so that's just what I watched. I did I that a lot with a lot of series. I had the Roseanne collection, Golden Girls, because I was like, well, I can spend 40 bucks for cable, or I can buy this DVD and watch it over and over again, which I know I'm going to do. So now, I know for myself personally, I am a bigger fan of the first three seasons as opposed to the late. I very much enjoy the later seasons, but I, you know, when I watch it, it's for the original, like the first three seasons, but you enjoy the later seasons is that correct yes yeah. i do i think it gets better after prue dies 
and leaves. See, that's funny. I'm the opposite. I I, lo I mean, I do think it's great, but I mean, I love Shannon Doherty and I loved Prue as a character, so. I definitely enjoy season two and three when Phoebe meets Cole and their romance is heating up and it goes through, I believe, season seven. It and does they, go for a while. And then they finally kill him forever so that's definitely something that you can kind of see throughout every season how he's there together then they kill him then he comes back <laughs> and so i definitely was that your favorite relationship was phoebe cole yes i liked them and i liked piper and leo yeah they're kind of the heart of the show I, I think I do. I mean, I really enjoyed a lot of the uh, relationships that Phoebe got into because I, I really enjoyed her with Nick Lachey when he was on the show. They worked at, you, you know, yes. okay. <laughs> when they worked at uh, that sort of like newspaper, she was like the columnist. Because I do think in the later seasons, those were my favorite of the later seasons was kind of when she was working at the kind of rebounding from Cole and sort of like becoming herself. And um, I really liked when Alyssa Milano did the really short hair. I mean, she just she always looked great. Uh, but, f you know, when Prue, for me, though, the most nostalgic episodes are when Prue is there. And Holly Marie Combs does, did a really good. But, you know, it was sort of, I didn't realize that Leo had come on to the show so early. It wasn't until you let me borrow the DVDs that I'm like, oh, he was there kind of from the beginning. beginning. Yeah, he was. And uh, I, I thought that they were kind of the heart of the show throughout. Who were some of, what were some of your favorite villains? Like, for me, um, Shax, I thought, you know, I think he's more formidable now because of taking out Prue. But I remember those creepy guys who, like, took out the eyes. Like, they would kidnap these young boys and then, like, yes. take out their eyes. I thought that was always super creepy. Um, did you have any other, did you remember, like, that you were like, oh. I really liked Zanku in the last two seasons. I really enjoyed the Avatars and Leo joined them and then they changed the world to where there's no good and evil and oh, right. they they the charmed ones didn't realize that in doing that people just disappeared if they caused conflict and so they unite with Zanku who is a demon to do do back to go back in time and undo the avatars doing that to the world and then after that's done, then they have to ultimately fight him and kill him. And then I do like how Billy and... Christy? Chris, yeah. yeah, Christy and Billy come in, and Billy is really close to them, and they're mentoring her. And then she meets her sister, Christy. Who was kidnapped, like, as a child, and Billy's always been kind of on the lookout for her. Yeah, yeah so the demons t took um, Christy and basically groomed her to fight the good yes yeah. to fight the charmed ones in so. a way that like it was manipulative like where she thought she was doing good though she wasn't like she didn't become necessarily evil it was she thought this evil she was doing was good you know yes. she yeah so oh yeah you know the i loved billy billy i really thought for a character to come in so late into the series that you could really latch on to like that I remember being frustrated through that season in terms of like wishing it would be resolved because I loved her with the Charmed One so much. So when she was away from them, I was like, ugh, because, but that's the making of a good villain or at least like, because it isn't so black or white, you know, they are kind of struggling. And I, I remember thinking like, oh, I want it to be resolved so much, but I think that's the making of a good villain or a good story where there's, it, it can go either way. You know, they're walking on a different line and, I think that's really cool. So like you said, Billy it did do a very good job. And I, Haley Kuko um, performed very well. So I think that helped her get bigger and better things. You know, move on to bigger and better sure, things. Sure, sure. And she went on to be the star of Big Bang Theory. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Haley Kuko did have that sort of performance that, you know, charisma to come out yeah i 100 percent agree i do want to jump back um, talk about some of the more controversial though moments of uh the original series you know having the sort of feud alleged feud i mean we're never going to have all the details but you know between shannon doherty versus i think it was shannon doherty versus Alyssa milano as well as shannon doherty versus brad kern because constance burge who created the show she left after the second season 
and she wanted to from my understanding focus more on the sisters less on the like vampy love interest type performances and i you know i have to say that like what i do enjoy i definitely enjoy the dating and the the shenanigans the sisters get in from it but um i mean i prefer and it's something that i hope this new series is going to focus on i do prefer the prefer the times when it's more about the sisters and stuff like that so like i said you thought it got better after shannon doherty left so you might not have these same feelings for me but i do think that you know i hope the new series focus on the sisters because i do think later on it did become more about the relationships and is that kind of what you enjoy more about it is when they're dating do you like the sister moments I like it all, like how they're witches and they have to, their witchly duties, but then it shows like their everyday life and their job struggles and relationship struggles and, you know, how forming a bond with your sister, you know, can help you get through rough times. Absolutely. Just kind of everything. It's not, in some, in some ways I feel like I was almost like living their life, like when I was watching it, like... You Not, feel part of the family, yes. or yeah. Like well, and you're right though, because sometimes it's the sisters. You're, it is about these sisters, Bob. But sometimes it's the conflict with sisters. You know, it's the the dynamic. It's the the way it goes around. You absolutely agree with that. And I would like to mention too, slightly off topic, but I really love the house. You know, just seeing the yeah. house. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It, I'll be watching the episodes and totally into it. But just like, I love that house. I think it's a fantastic house, and I'm hoping too. You know, I will miss. I missed when they closed down P3, which was yeah. the dorkiest name ever of a club. But I, you know, I loved the whole when they'd have those guest musicians come on. When you watch it now, I mean, it's totally 90s bands, yeah. you know, these, but I love it. I mean, I'm going through this nostalgic period of the 90s, even music I didn't care for then. If I hear it now, I'm like, play it louder. I got to <laughs> hear it. And I, you know, but that, so seeing that house with the music and stuff, you know, for maybe people, you know, maybe teenagers now, this new reboot, if it's successful, they'll have that nostalgic for it. But it is, you know, big for me, the original series. And getting towards the end of the series, though, you know, I think that it was a really good finale, you know, that it kind of wrapped up. And, you know, for you being such a fan of the series, I imagine, you know, the finale must be a big moment for you. And Hit your heartstrings a little bit. Yeah, it makes yeah. me cry every time Does I watch it. Really? it. They bring everybody back, and well, can... except for Shannon Doherty. Yes, except Which for her. They did ask her. I found out. You know, they did ask her. And yes, they do show a lot of pictures and moments and. Yeah, and then you get to see Piper and Leo's kids, a little older, probably ten or fifteen years older, and then they show leo and piper older probably in their 60s like in giving her kids the book to kind of teach them you know the next generation of magic to keep it going on yeah and they almost leave the finale where it could go either way where they could do a reboot a reboot or they would you know do in a spin-off of the original. Continue the story on some, which they have. I haven't read any. Have you ever read any of the comics or graphic novels? I mean, like, I guess they continue on the series. No, I haven't read. I any haven't of either. That. In fact, I know they bring Prue back. I think her, she's like a character named Patience or something like that. But you know, I do want to address something you said in there, where you do talk. Yeah, they mention the kids kind of in this middle period about being like 15 years old, which is cool because we see them as kids. Piper and Leo's Wyatt and Chris, we see them as kids, but in the show we also got to see them in their like 20s. So it's kind of cool that there's like this middle ground area they land in and you have Patty because they show Patty in it and Grams and I would like to say too that some of my favorite moments from the series were when Grams would make an appearance or they'd go back in time to visit Patty or you know Pat, where I liked that Patty and Grams kind of jumped in and uh, not to harp on it but I you know again with Prue's death though there was a lot of problematic elements I found having Patty and Grams come in but then yet you know, obviously they couldn't have it for logistical reasons, but there was no reason they couldn't have resur you know, resurrected Prue at yeah, some point. Yeah, they could have. You know, I mean, as many times because there there was always all these rules and logic. Leo can't bring back dead people, but he kind of would at certain points or this and that. So, you know, and I did mention earlier Shaxx being such a formidable villain. I should say it's now when I see him, it is because I know the result. But at the time, I don't think Shax would have been somebody that could have taken out Prue, who was like the strongest witch at the time. It's kind of like a cliffhanger. It happens, and then you don't really 
like when it was airing, you wouldn't really know that Prue died until the next season where Absolutely. they say it. So if you watch it up until the season three finale and then you watch season four, it could have been like Prue was there or Paige was there. It's never like a clear cut Prue well, died. I feel like in a way too, it almost seems if you watch it when it plays out, it seems like the the un, the most unlikely of the three sisters to die in that finale would have been Prue. I feel like maybe they knew there were going to be problems, but they kind of thought maybe Shannon Doherty was going to get her way. And right. I think like the whole way it's set up, it's like of all the sisters to go in that moment, the way they set that whole episode up, I felt like Prue was the least likely to. So it kind of was strange that it wasn't. But I will say, though, my my new concern with the reboot is that it will sort of, if it is successful, block any sort of real reunion. Not that there's anything in the works. And it seems like I feel like a li- like the, 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 the main trio, the original trio, uh, the original Charmed Ones, well, you know, they are a little bit better now in terms of being angry at each other or feuds now from the past. Alyssa Milano, Shannon Doherty, I think they've, you know, bonded a little bit or healed some old wounds. I mean, Holly Marie Combs and Shannon Doherty were always good friends, but still, I don't see any sort of reunion coming on. However, it's even more of that nail in the coffin of not... And I do think that for all the good the reboot did in that first episode, in terms of female power, strong story, good effects. I do think that they... Do you think, though, that having this new series might block? Do you think they could still do a... Say say these women all came back and they wanted to do a show. Do you think that that would be able to be a possibility? Or do you think this might now block it? I do think it will block it because Mm -hmm. there's really... No way they could do a spinoff It'll now. It'll be too confusing. When... People be like, wait, wait, what's going on? And I think that's why there was a lot of skepticism at first about a new reboot without the original sisters being there was because all of the diehard fans knew there would never be a way that the original ones could have a show together again. Yeah. But, you know, I did think they did a really good job doing a reboot for such hardcore fans that a lot of people were really against it. Like, they had the right touches. You know, having the the original Book of Shadows, I mean, I don't know if it's the original one they used, but having the same design for the Charmed Ones and stuff like that, I think they they found a good balance in terms of, we're going to show you what you want for the fans, but we are a different show, but we, you know, they did really well balancing out the newcomers for as well as the fans, I thought. I definitely agree. Yeah, I think overall it was it was pretty good. And uh, just real quick, Gina, you know, one last thing. I always like to see what in the world right now you would like to see a little bit better. What can we do to improve the world? I know, you know, I'm putting it on the spot, but like I know with you, you suffer from different forms of pain. You have, a, you know, there's you're an advocate for people being a little bit more uh, aware you know, a pain, is that something that you would like to see a little bit more understanding of in the world right now? I definitely would, and being more understanding of substance abuse disorders, um, people receiving mental health treatment, you know, um, being more compassionate to people that do have problems, more acceptance in the workplace. Because people, there are, you know, there are a lot of stigmas, you know, and a lot of preconceived notions. You know, I think we need to have people be able to have better access to treatment, you know, to counseling, to whatever they need. And there's a lot of barriers with the way our government is and money and just a lot of things that hinder people from being able to get the help they need. Well, and it all starts with education and being well informed. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much, Gina, for being there. I had a really good time talking about Charmed with you. And, uh, you know, I'm probably going to, you know, we were I've been t- we talked about The Office a couple weeks ago with my friend Alicia. So now I've got all these marathons, and I don't know which way to go, The Office or Charmed. Because I definitely need more after seeing that first episode, and I thought they did a really good job. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. This is 411 Pop Culture, real people talking about really everything.